We're not live. Are we live now? No. Okay. <laughs> it's all recorded. It's going to drop on the same week as the episode. Okay, cool, cool. Because I, I was seeing the comments and I'm like, oh, it's live? I didn't know that. All right. Welcome back to another radio interview. And of course, we are Indie Rage Radio, IndieRageRadio.com. If you want to find out a little bit about us, swing over to the website. How did you do that? Some other bands have done that before. I don't know. How do you do that? I think it's this. It's this. Oh, it must be. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Now it makes sense. I was mm -hmm. mind boggled the whole time, but now we have finally got to the bottom of that. I got we're, you. We're an independent and unsigned uh, digital radio station and a syndicated radio show on 18 stations across the world. So check us out. Indie Rage Radio indieragedradio.com and while you're there how do i get this going oh there we go you can check out our c4 energy affiliate link if you like what we do and you want to support our mission of providing a global platform for independent and unsigned bands one of the easiest ways to do it and i like it because you get something in return everybody loves energy drinks everybody loves <laughs> pre-workout well most people as you can see i don't tinyurl.com slash shop c4 energy you can grab some of that today and we'll receive a small commission. Much appreciated. All right. So here we go. Radio interview in three, two, one. Indie Rage Hello. Radio, IndieRageRadio.com. We are kicking off our number one with the band that has just exploded on the scene. We have the lead vocalist, Nikolai, here with us from the band Closure. How you doing, ma'am? Pretty good, Mike. How are you? I'm glad that you are here. I am fan. In fact, we're going to talk about how the band got together and such later on this hour. But the way we kick off a show, the Rage Nation, they're a little, they're a little nosy. They want to know a little bit about Nikolai. So we're going to play a game called 10 Rounds with Mikey O. Oh, God. <laughs> it's kind of like... A this or that. I'm going to ask you like a few things and you just pick what you like better. Okay. Okay. I can do that. All right. Here we go. Round number one. First few rounds are going to be based on Florida because you're out of Orlando. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Round number one. Orange or apple? Orange. It's yes. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I don't know if we're because Georgia is known for peaches, but over here in Louisiana, if you guys are ever touring around Ruston, uh -huh. And you drive past a peach stand, make sure you stop because the They're peaches good. in Ruston are out of this world. Okay. I think we actually are going to Louisiana, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure exactly where on this upcoming tour. So I'll keep you an may eye have out. To, you may have to make this like a pit stop. Um, maybe. I'll on let my way. tour manager know before she kills me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Round number two, Disney World or Universal Studios? Universal hands down because they have way better roller coasters. However... Really? If I can put an option C, Bush uh -huh. Gardens. You know what? Nobody ever talks about Bush Gardens. What's so good Bush about Gardens it? Bush Gardens is cheaper. Okay. They have a Chick fil A and a Starbucks inside. And uh, their lines never exceed like 45 minutes, no matter like what time of the season. Versus like Universal, if you're not paying for that fast pass, you're waiting like two hours just for Velocicoaster. Wow. Yeah. Unreal. So if you're Bush into Gardens adrenaline and like better roller coasters, definitely Bush Gardens. Is that in the Orlando area too? It's technically in Tampa, but like what's okay. two hours for like a whole day of like excitement? Exactly. And, and you can ride more than three rides. It, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Round number three. Daytona Beach or the Keys? Daytona Beach because it's cheaper and you can get trash here or there. And they have bike week and stuff. Nice. <laughs> yeah, they got more rock shows and all that, too. So, Daytona. <laughs> all right, round number four. Hamburger or pizza? Pizza. Yeah? What's your favorite topping? Pizza. Uh, everything. Like, supreme. All of it. Just okay. slap it on there. Crispy New York style. Okay, and not to get scandalous, uh, pineapple, yes or no? Yes. Wow. I just, because hear me out, right? Hear me out. If you do pineapple... And everyone thinks pineapple, ham, and bacon. But, like, fun fact, my father used to own, like, eight pizza restaurants. Oh, nice. So, like, we're, like, we really know pizza. If you ever do pineapple with the spicy cupping, like, pepperoni, 
and uh, what's it called? Bacon. It's like a, a spicier, zestier version of a Hawaiian. It's like w so good. And the sweet and spicy really complements. And anyone who says that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza, that's the equivalent to saying that cream cheese doesn't belong on like sushi or something. Like it does. Just extend your palate a bit. You know, you're the second person because we were talking about pizza the other day with Door 13 from San Diego, California. Yeah, yeah. And and the cupping pepperonis came up then too. They are so much like they're the right. All the other pepperonis are inferior compared to the cupping pepperoni. So like I just feel like it just has more flavor. I mean, I still mm -hmm. like OG, you know, New York pizza. I'm from New York. So like obviously I'm gonna always love it. But like the cupping, it's you know how like when you buy a slice of pizza from downtown Orlando and it has that extra grease on it and you enjoy mm -hmm. it, it cups that for you. Yes. So like you just can't go wrong. I mean, it's not better for you. It's probably worse, but anything that tastes good is. So there's that too. <laughs> yeah. And then if you get like the charring around the rim. Oh, oh God. So I mean, I just, I think pizza should always be crispy or well done, but like, I don't know. Florida's weird. People like undercook stuff here. <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, I don't know. They're overcooked. They're like brown and like red from sunburns, but like all their foods undercooked sometimes. I feel like that. I don't know. That's just the New Yorker at me saying that. Round number five, high heels or combat boots? Heels. Yeah. Oh, it kind of looked like you were struggling there for a second. Um, Because I have a love for Doc Martens and platforms. I, I probably own way too many pairs. However, any excuse to wear like platform thigh high boots or stilettos, I take. So <laughs> heels. Right up. I even wear stilettos on stage. So there's that. How did how, how was that the first time you did that? I mean, I'm sure you had years of stiletto walking, but I mean, not in running around a yeah. stage and performing. I feel like if you can drunk walk down downtown's like brick road, you're unstoppable. Mm. and um i've had a lot of experience doing that so i'm pretty unstoppable i think I've, there's a couple of videos where like you will see me and i don't eat my boots are somewhere over here but um i wear like six inch platform thigh highs and there's been multiple times where i will like jump off the riser and stick it every time wow yeah i'm not athletic unless we're talking about heels on stage and then i am a beast i mean not only are you walking around the stage dancing a little bit but then you're pulling like a nadia coming each dismount absolutely i mean dude adrenaline works wonders <laughs> <laughs> all right round number where are we i think i need to get bifocals round number six summer or winter winter yeah now the winters in orlando probably are pretty mild right they are i mean winters are like a nice fall we have um we have Satan's butthole, um, spring and fall as like Florida weather. So that's about it. Like I, I know, look, mother nature did not get the memo this year about summer starting no. June 20th, because mm -hmm. I mean, beginning of May, it was, we're located here in Louisiana. So we're right around the same parallel as you guys. And it's just absolutely terrible. Yeah. And Louisiana is a lot like Florida with the humidity. <laughs> So it's like 98 degrees, but it feels like 104. It's like if you took a mug, put some water, flipped it upside down and microwaved it. And that's like what it feels like half the time here. So winter. But even if I was in a colder area, like I've done tours and runs, you know, throughout the winter. And I'd rather be cold and bundle up and have any more excuses to have less frizzy hair and wear leather jackets and thigh highs. Because you can only take off so much clothes until it's like an arrest charge waiting to happen, but you could always wear a really cool leather jacket. So I'm mm -hmm. sticking with cold. Yes. I, you know, and I've told that many people a time too. Yeah. All right. Round number seven, fly or drive. Fly. Now, are we talking, I don't even know what I was about to say. Cause I know you do a lot of driving, you know, obviously with the career oh, path that you have. Um, what's your favorite thing to do while flying? Um, jumping off the plane. I've skydived a couple times. Really? So there's, yeah, yeah. No, I just like flying. I mean, I, I've been to Europe. I've I've flown around. I mean, I fly around a lot for even just like, you know, being in the band. Like when I first met my band, I had to fly to them and, you know, going to NAM and like sometimes 
uh, when you have to like play festivals and you want to stay a day or two later for interviews as like the singer, the band drives home and you get to fly. Flying just way better. And airports are interesting. It's like mm -hmm. a, a classier version of a Walmart. You can people watch. <laughs> Except nobody's so, wearing like uh, pink sweat shorts and a uh, Taz t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, last airport, I think I was coming from uh, like a NASCAR event or something. And because I will use any excuse. To, if I can find a cheap ticket in an event, I will take it and I will book a flight a day before. Like literally, if I'm off for three days, I'm booking something or going somewhere. But um, I remember last time, I think I saw like a girl like get like strapped onto a stretcher and like was freaking out and screaming. And then yeah, yeah. right next to it, there was like a really scared couple like about to fly on for their anniversary. So it was like such an, a polar opposite situation going on. Yeah, I almost I don't died. Know, I think Ch it's cool. I almost died in Chicago in O'Hare. Oh, yeah, but O'Hare is a crappy airport. Can I say that word on the radio? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not go. a great air. I mean, it's not as bad as JFK. Um, I won't fly out of that unless I like absolutely have to do international. Yeah. Because JFK makes me want to. Oh, no. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, bad. it's a lot. It's, it's, I mean, I'm a New Yorker and I'll go to like, LaGuardia, like, or Newark, New Jersey before I'm going to JFK. Yeah. Because it's just so much and like nobody knows where they're going. And it like the inner New Yorker in me, like, is like, get in your lane, dude. We have places to be. Like, it's the weirdest thing. In New York, like, you're always in a rush, even if you have nowhere to go. And JFK absolutely like makes me like lose my mind. <laughs> yeah. Like, Dallas has a huge, have you been to the Dallas one? I have not. Dallas airport. It's it's humongous, obviously. But like yeah. when I was in O'Hare the whole time, like I ended up getting to the right place. But the whole time I was thinking, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like I'm so lost. But that's like the fun of like airports too, though. Like when you're driving, you're stuck. And I have ADHD. So just imagine me like stuck in a car for hours on it. On tour, all I do is sleep. Because if right. I don't, I probably could go crazy. <laughs> so I just sleep. And then for your vocals, too, you have to, you know, pay attention to it. But, yeah, no, I, like, lose my mind in a car. In an airplane, I'm, like, there for two, three hours. And if it's a really long flight, I'll get tipsy on the flight. So then by the time I sober up, I'm, like, good. And it's just a just more fun of an experience. And then, I mean, if we're not flying to a destination, we're jumping out of them. It's just as fun, too. So if not more. So round number eight, CD or digital download? Um, a digital download. And the only reason I say that is because I fly a lot and I travel a lot and it'd be very hard for me to keep a CD player on me. Um, but I do have a like extensive record collection just because there is a warmth to records. And um, when I was little and like didn't have a lot of money and like in high school, I uh, I used to go to like a lot of um, thrift stores and buy like dollar records and like mm. hope to God that I might like this band or like find snippets of their songs before I buy it. And so that kind of really, that holds like a, a soft spot of my heart because like I really got into music 17, 18, 19 because of like the record players and stuff. So digital for just easiness, but if I could record players also. Round number nine, metalcore or pop punk? Metalcore. Oh, that was that was pretty definite right there. What's your favorite yeah. metalcore band? Uh, right now, I would probably say Magnolia Park, mm -hmm. um, just because the lead singer Josh is like a really good friend of mine. And other than Magnolia Park, I would say, I mean, is like Bad Omens considered metalcore? I know they're considered core of some sort. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would say like Bad Omens or, uh, oh my God, what was another band? There was another band. Uh, Sleep Token. Mm. As of right now, those are like the three. But Magnolia Park's a really dope band. And if people who are, whoever's watching this, if they don't know, really check them out because they actually started off pop punk. And uh, nice. I'm not a crazy punk fan unless it's just like regular punk. Um, you know, like during the Misfits era. Like that's the punk that I kind of like got into. And that's the punk that my brothers raised me on because um, all my brothers are older than me. And magnolia park started off pop punk so if you're into them check out their old discography but then their new stuff is heavy and it's good nice all right and the finale round number 10 
Mohawk or mullet? Mullet. Mullet. And, and you hear me out, it. man. You're no, we're not mullet. Mullet is like, okay, everyone's going to look good in a mohawk. You can't go wrong with a mohawk. But if you can pull off a mullet, that's like a dude that can pull off a porn stash. You're just cool then. <laughs> and so if you can pull off a mullet, you're officially like, so freakishly cool or you look really hipster and you overpay for like ipa beers it's really just one of those two but if you can pull off a mullet you're like freakishly cool no and it, it's coming back so hard like when it i really dropped my daughter off for school like every single boy at this school has a mullet yeah i mean that could be just louisiana too because i feel like down south we never wanted to give that up but <laughs> I've noticed like there's like more mullet like occurrences or like surges happen in like in Orlando a lot yeah. and a lot of like the rock and metal scene are taking it now it's not even like country or like hillbilly people it's really like a lot of like the metal heads right. doing like a shaggier version of it and I think it looks cool there you go hmm? and rounds with Mike Theo congratulations <laughs> all right Nikolai let's talk about a song that you guys are supporting on radio right now People can hear it live when you guys go on tour. We'll talk about that later on in the show. It's called Nevermore. What's this yes. song about? Um, this song is just kind of like accepting uh, the fate of like either a relationship or situation kind of ending. And um, I think uh, the lyrics kind of show that. The first verse is kind of like the struggle um, from like my point of view. Because it, it it's definitely is like a very um personal song, but uh, it's kind of the beginning of like her or the person kind of like begging, like, hey, like something needs to change, like something's not right. I don't know what's going on, but like if we keep up this way, like we're not gonna be whatever that we are. And then by the second verse, it's you get to hear the spite a little bit in like the way I wrote it because it. It's literally like I'm saying, like, you literally threw it away, you know, like you keep asking for more, but like, you know what you're doing to me or the situation. And then by the end, it's just like, um, it's not necessarily a cry for help, but like, if you've ever been in a situation where um, you kind of just have to like exhale all of your emotions and feelings and like, it might be like a cry or a scream, but it's really just like letting go of all the issues before you just, you're done before it's never more. Um, that's kind of why the ending's like really, really loud and I belt a crazy amount and my producer actually, that was his idea because I just wanted to repeat the chorus as usual and maybe do like a run or two in there because I love throwing runs and songs. Um, but he was like, hey, if you have the range for it, I think you should just go one octave higher and really shoot for it. And it, I liked it because it really portrayed like the final like screams of a fight or the final like aha is of like a moment where you're like, I'm letting this go. So like Nevermore really is just kind of like the um, trials and tribulations of getting through that breakup process of whatever it may be. Mine actually wasn't a relationship relationship, but it was a relationship with like a group of people. And um, there was a lot of dynamic in that song. And it, I, I think it shows through the lyrics and especially the music video. If your local radio station isn't playing this, they can get it. This is Closure with Nevermore on Indie Rage Radio. All right, very good. All right, segment number two, we're going to kind of talk about how you met the guys, like we were alluding to earlier. Awesome. Am I Ooh. doing okay? Perfect. You're doing great. Okay, cool. I get nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. Radio scare me more than stage, because, like, stage, if I fuck up, odds are people are drunk, and, like, <laughs> they're not going to notice. Yeah, but yeah. But radio, yeah. like, you re-record, and you rewatch that, and, oh, my God, gets me nervous, especially live radio. This one's not as bad, because... Well, I don't know if you can edit this really. So no, it's still just as bad now that I'm thinking about it. Huh. I mean, I mean, it can be edited. Um, yeah. And some people could be drunk while they watch it. Touche. <laughs> you know? Touche. All right, here we go. Segment two. In three, two, one. Indie Rage Radio, IndieRageRadio.com. We are back with Nikolai. She's the lead vocalist from the band Closure. Where can everybody find you guys on the internet? Uh, you can go on either officialclosure.com or we're official closure on all platforms. And it's closure with a Z, C L O Z U R E. So a few months ago 
on our digital radio station. I was rocking out to it. And mm-hmm. Queen of the Damned came on. Oh, and, yeah. I, and I was like, man, I wonder what Nikolai is up to these days. <laughs> and then I guess like maybe a week or so before that, it's weird how all this came together. A week mm-hmm. before, before that, um, and this was months ago, your PR company had reached out with your single, uh, okay. the Devil Effect. Yes. And I was like, man, that girl looks familiar. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I, I can't place her right now, but that girl really looks familiar. So yeah. th- the more sleuthing I did on the internet, I was like, that's Nikolai. Yeah. That's crazy. So, and the funny thing is, is um, that song is very interesting because um, the people that know me very well can find even easier, like an easier way to like link the two because my old band name is in the resurgence of my new band and my first title song. Because mm. that song was heavily, heavily, as I mean, as a singer and a songwriter, it was heavily influenced with like some situations that happened in my life. So yeah. I think that actually helped people too, because they were like, wait a minute. <laughs> and I'm like, surprise. <laughs> so you kind of talked about how you met the band when we were off the air. And yeah. I couldn't go back and listen to our old interview because that was like a few years ago. Yeah. And since then, Hurricane Laura came through. And we pretty much lost everything. So all the hard drives got ruined. So, um, but anyways, if I remember correctly, when you met your old bandmates, it was through a Craigslist ad and you mm-hmm. met them in a warehouse. Yeah, yeah. It was like um, out in the middle of nowhere. And so the story like, that you have of meeting the guys in closure is even crazier. It doesn't get better. No. And I feel like that's just rock. I think that's, I think rock is supposed to be weird and gritty and just potentially like wild. Um, And it clearly keeps on happening because, yeah, no, I met my old band on a Craigslist post because I actually, uh, I I was never really a singer in high school. Um, I got kicked out of choir in like middle school. So like I just had this like weird inkling to want to be a singer. And I was so good at karaoke. I'd like to think I was really good at karaoke. Um... So like around 27, 2018, 2018 or 2019, I was like, you know, this is before Craigslist got shut down on a couple different like, you know, avenues um, and before it got really sketchy. But I was like on the musicians forum and I found my old band and I remember it was like a random Tuesday night and they used to record or I think they still do um, in like a warehouse unit, like where like it's like section facilities and the text message which i I think i have a screenshot of it because even though i may not be with that act anymore i think that that was the real first act where like festivals were played and like experiences were made and i think i kind of honed down like i had the opportunity to hone down nikolai as like what i am now but um it on the text it says like hey we're the last warehouse unit next to the dumpster on the right hand side and it's like nine o'clock at night on a tuesday and I didn't tell my mom or my dad this because like I didn't want them to like kill me because I watch a lot of horror films and that is how that starts. Um, so I just told like a friend or two, like as I was there, so they couldn't stop me. And you know, we hit it off, and that's how that band started. And then later on, when this band started, it was different because I wasn't looking to be in a band anymore. I was so heartbroken. It was like my first real breakup with like a band. I felt like I didn't want to ever be in another band again. It's like, it was like a horrible relationship breakup. And I just start getting these weird DMs from a guy that has a dog named Boss on his <laughs> dog's account. And at the time, it was so strange because I didn't realize that people knew me outside of like my band. I know that sounds strange, but on Instagram, I like makeup and I'm like a girly girl, but like on with my band, I get to be one of the guys and I get to be that singer and that rocker. Um, so I didn't realize that people kind of knew me outside of my band. And there were so many people hitting me up and so many people flooding me like, hey, you should join this or that. I mean, I had weird bands from like California wanting me to join like an antichrist band. And that's not even oh, like my wow. vibe. Yeah, it was the weirdest like two, three months of like my life, like the high like really really high peaks because i was like honor from some people that were asking me but slightly intimidated and then like really weirded out from like offers from others but then 
one day I'm like looking at this guy that messaged me like four time a dog account. And then I get like a very similar message off of a management account called MK management. And I finally responded back and I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let me fly to Alabama and just meet these guys. Because for some odd reason, there was something about them over like Skype phone calls and whatnot. And that was what was lacking with every other band that like I auditioned with. Cause I auditioned for uh, like quite a bit. And, um, I met them in Alabama in like one day. Um, so now I'm flying to a different state to meet strangers. Before it was Craigslist. Now I'm flying to states to meet strangers. And then within the first day, the devil effect was worked, like written down, like within the first day. And then by the second time that we practice, um, I wrote Nevermore. And so it was just kind of like instantaneous. But if it weren't for my manager, MK management, and he's in Louisiana, nice. um, I would have never met closure i didn't even know who they were and it was all from a freaking dog account where he was spamming me until <laughs> he realized i wasn't responding to a weirdo person that's messaging me about like an, an amazing future of touring and stuff from a dog account <laughs> it was yeah and i even told him i was like dude you need to check what like from here on out as you manage you need to check which account you're messaging on people off of because like it was interesting but yeah i wonder what his post on his dogs like before he like messaged you he was like yeah. oh wait let me go ahead and put this boss post out yeah yeah <laughs> and then no, he forgot to switch over i have no idea i mean like it was just like a bunch of photos of like this is a cute chocolate lab but like I don't know. The music industry is interesting. So there's always that that one person that claims that they know everybody, but like they're very odd, like the way they maneuver around like the internet. And you're like, dude, you're an, a strange person. So it kind of came off that way. Like not yeah. to be rude, because I love Nolan. He's a great guy now. Like he's literally our manager. But the first time that like the few first few messages, I was like, dude, why is this weirdo like messaging me on like a dog account? And he was persistent. But like, I mean, hey, he started to message me on the uh, band account. And then like, you know, all it took was literally like one webcam video. And I think three days later I was flying to Alabama. So there's, I make interesting decisions. I jump out of planes. I meet people from Craigslist and I fly to different States to meet bands. So clearly I have a lot of content to write. <laughs> yeah. And, and speaking of getting you on tours, you yeah. guys are going to be on tour with power man, 5,000 yeah. sponge and tantric. Correct. That then, is like an, a 90s kid's dream. Uh, yeah, I know. We're going to be on tour July 2nd, I believe, um, through July 21st, I think. So it's a really cool first run. I mean, we did do a small four-day run um, just to kind of feel out each other um, because, you know, our manager's in Louisiana. We have bandmates in Alabama. Our bassist is in Kentucky. I'm in Florida. So um, we kind of really needed to like figure out how we operated on stage, but that was a four day run. And that was like a home, like Orlando show, you know, like one Fort Myers show and one Alabama show. So it was just for our people to kind of see the new project. This one, it's going to be interesting because this is our first real tour. And then we have another even bigger tour, I think, um, in October. Nice. So, and that's with Fozzy and I'm a, I'm a WWF like fan. So hey. I had a little bit of like a freak out when I found out that like I was going to be chilling with Chris Jericho. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Maybe you guys can get on this podcast. I dude, I can only pray. Yes. That would be humongous. As many that listeners as he has. I, I know. Right. I mean, yeah. I love Chris Jericho. I mean, mind you, my favorite person was like Undertaker. And I really used to be obsessed with The Rock because I had a crush on him when I was like a little kid. But just that whole era of like WWF before it became WWE, when like you believed that the wrestling was real. Yeah. You know, like that was like the golden era. And I used to watch that all the time with my older brothers. So to fast forward and then and I guess just being the position that I'm in now with like a whole new band and like everything that I've learned and experienced and then get to have that like full circle moment where I'm like calling my older brothers and I'm like, yo, guess what? I'm going on towards Chris Jericho. It kind of makes you have like a proud moment where you're like, oh, wow, cool. I did this. Are they already asking you to get like uh, yeah. autographs yeah. and stuff? Dude, my brother is like asking me for like autographs from Power Man 5000 and uh, <laughs> Sponge. 
And then uh, my other brother's asking me for Chris Jericho. So like one brother's into one tour, the other brother's into the other tour. Yeah, nice. So it's it's it worked out, you know. All right. So we're going to continue on with the music here on Indie Rage Radio. We will catch back up in hour number two with Nikolai from Closure. And that's Closure with a Z. Go and Google them. Favorite streaming platform. Go stream their music. Go get you. Some. You guys have merch out yet? We do have merch. Nice. And it's not out yet, but by the time this video is out, it will be out online. Nice. Go grab your merch. Uh, go follow them on your favorite social media platform. Help support this band. We'll be back. Awesome. All right. Very good. In segment three, we're going to talk a little bit about Orlando. Ooh, okay. All right. Here we go. In three, yeah. two, one. Indie Rage Radio, IndieRageRadio.com. Blasting off hour number two with Nikolai for the band Closure. This Closure with a Z. Go find them out. Hit them up on social media. Go buy some merch. Stream their music. All right. So you're from Orlando. Let's talk a little bit about Orlando. Yes. Now, everybody knows, obviously, um, Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. Now, Walt Disney World is not in Orlando. And let's it's go not. Let's go ahead and put this to bed. It's a, it's a it's a city that's next to Orlando. Is it pronounced Kissimmee or Kissimmee? Kissimmee. Okay, that's what I figured. I mean, that's what I say. <laughs> I I I went there a few times when I was a kid. My grandpa always used to call it Kissimmee. Kissimmee. And I think it was I just like everyone says Kissimmee. Funny, maybe. I think uh, it's like uh, you but know, I, I think imagine it's an Indian word. Because yeah, and then I feel like people. There's a lot of like. Like people say a popka and up or a popka. Like I've I've heard of different variations, but like I say Kissimmee. Kissimmee. That's Kissimmee. probably the right way. Kissimmee? Kissimmee. You know what? Now that I'm starting to like question myself. I don't know. Uh -oh. You're asking like a native New Yorker. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It, it's whatever you need it to be. Okay. Because it's Disney and I don't think anyone is like honestly from there. It's they're just there for Disney. Yeah. And and Truth be told, most people probably think that Disney World's in Orlando anyway. So yeah, they do. And then there's also other areas like Celebration and stuff that's owned by Disney that's like not even part of like Kissimmee. So um, oh, it's Kissimmee. Kissimmee. There it there is. We there we go. <laughs> Kissimmee. Kiss yeah. I don't. Oh, now see, now I'm confused. I don't know. It is part of Orlando. Just say Orlando. Everything's yeah. Orlando unless it's like Tampa, Miami, or like Jacksonville. Right. <laughs> so somebody. They got themselves a cheap ticket. They're heading down there. They just boarded the Spirit Airlines. They're oh. coming. They're coming down for a night of fun in Orlando. What's yes. one restaurant they should go eat at? Um, Cafe Tutu Tango. Okay. What what kind of food it, they got there? So Cafe Tutu Tango is a brunch to dinner place. If you're uh -huh. there for brunch, they have all you can drink mimosas, and they have like it's all tapas. So you just keep. Um, I'm sorry. Um, and then if you're there for dinner, they have shows. So they have like psychics there. They have like Michael Jackson impersonations. They have, it's, it's just a really weird array of things in like a big restaurant with a bunch of like all you can eat tapas and all you can drink alcohol. So you really honestly can't go wrong. It's like a little Vegas in Orlando. Kind of, except... I think it's almost weirder. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the like Ripley's it Believe really It or Not strange. in Las Vegas, yeah. in Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they got them some uh, banging tapas. They yeah. got themselves a few mimosas. Now they want to go catch a rock show. What's the best rock venue in, in Orlando? Um, rock show, I would say Conduit. Just because Conduit is like an absolute classic. And every touring band that's like starting off will always stop at the conduit but every local band that does like really big shows and fun shows it's always at the conduit um however if you're not into the heavier scene then will's pub because will's pub is like the same i feel like those are the two really big venues where if you're into like metal and like more core conduit if you're into like indie or like even some kind of like pop rock bands coming through it's it's conduit or little like Will's pub. You just have to go to those two. All right. And so they caught themselves a great show. What part of Orlando should they avoid? 
OBT. <laughs> What's that stand for? OBT, Orange Orange Blossom Trail. I mean, just uh, basically, just make sure that no one ever uses the hyphenated version of that street name which is obt if they're like oh you're on obt you're not in a good area if they're like oh you're on orange blossom trail you're on like the outskirts of that street and you're fine obt mm, not so much <laughs> yeah and if somebody says orange blossom trail it kind of has a nice ring to it so you <laughs> you wouldn't think to stay away yeah well if they're like oh yeah you're gonna take a uh you know right on orange blossom you know they're like oh, okay so like we're on the outskirts of orange blossom because it's like a street but now if they're like, yeah, you got to get to the OBT, they're kind of foreshadowing that like something's about to go down. Oh, no. Like they hyphenated it for a reason so they can get to the point of you shouldn't be there. <laughs> so don't be on OBT unless you want to like buy a person for a time being or do some illegal stuff. That's right. about it. <laughs> it's the dark web of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Golly>. <laughs> So how did you get down to Orlando? I mean, you've said that you grew up in New York. How did you find yeah. yourself down in Florida? So like a bunch of Albanians, I think we all kind of like originate in New York when you, I'm first born. So my family, you know, came off of like, you know, a plane or a boat or whatever um, to America and started their lives here. Um, but you always start off either like either in Philadelphia or New York. And then there's like a really large Albanian community in New York. And that's where I was born. And I was there till like six um, so I didn't live late there. However, because all my family's there and like anytime an Albanian gets married, they have to get married in the Albanian church in New York. Even if we're from Florida, like my cousins are getting married and they're getting married in the Albanian church in New York. Wow. I'm constantly always back there. Um, and I think we moved to Florida just because there was a lot of pizza shops in New York and the business seemed more fitting in Florida. And so we just came as like a big family and opened up a bunch of shops and the rest is history, I guess. Nice. Yeah. All right. We will catch back up with Nikolai at the end of the hour. And we will play the song that she talked about last hour, the devil effect right here on Indie yeah. rage radio. All right. Very cool. Last segment is kind of like we're up against the clock. It's right at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. So we're tying a bow on everything. Um, so it's kind of fast pace. Okay. All right, here we go. In three, yep. two, two, one indie rage radio indie rage radio.com sadly we are here <sighs> every show we got to get to the last segment unfortunately we are joined by nikolai she is the lead vocalist of the band closure with a z google them find them on your favorite social media platform go stream their music on spotify go get their merch go check them out on tour once you hit them up on social media make sure you hit one of those tour stops go see them live and in person so Nikolai, what does the future hold for Closure? The future holds a lot. Um, we have, I think, two or three singles coming out this year. Um, we have a whole bunch of merch coming out. I mean, I worked with some really cool artists and designers from either in states or out of country. So the merch is going to be really dope. We have a lot of tours. And we do have a collaboration with another band. Mm -hmm. um, we did a song together and you would have never typically seen these two bands collaborate but you're going to see that um in the near future maybe yeah. not when this radio podcast is like out but shortly after you'll start to see like some hints and some like news of it but yeah there's just a lot i mean closure is not having closure anytime soon it's it <laughs> is it is doing a lot and um i mean we hit the first year we hit the ground running and like, we're going to continue to do so. So new music, lots of tours, new merch collaborations. I mean, honestly, anything that a band can do, we probably already have it out in the works or we're doing it right now. <laughs> yeah. You just made me think of a sticker or a t-shirt. And if you want to take it, it's yours. Closure is open for business. Yeah, maybe we should do that. Closure <laughs> is open for business and do like one of those like little signs that you put like on front of like a, a shop or something. Yes, yes. Yeah. I like it's it. It's so funny because like I always use the uh, the joke, closure gave me closure. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so now closure's not closing anytime soon. Now closure's open. <laughs> All right. So the final song that we're going to play from your band is called The Devil Effect. What is this about? The Devil Effect is all about um, taking power again, taking full reign, and being surrounded by the people that love and support you. 
Um, it, it had a lot of animosities at first when writing it, but the more and more I listened to it, the more and more, um, it kind of is just like an anthem song. It talks about um, being supported and like being backed by like your army or your family or people that support you in your decisions and acts. And it really, the words are very clear. When I say walk the line, I'm welcomed home. It literally means go screw yourself to whoever, you know, did you harm. And, you know, you're welcomed home in like a way better and healthier situation. And that is the devil effect. So it's it's kind of like um, when the devil or something ill and toxic affects you and it's the aftermath of like getting back up on your feet so the dev ill effect she <laughs> is nikolai she's the lead vocalist for the band closure my name is mikey oh we are out of here this is the devil effect we'll see you when we see ya <laughs> and you got the cool effect too nice see <laughs> all right but hey before you get out of here can you um do a drop for me and say, this is Nikolai from the band Closure, and you're listening to Indie Rage Radio? Absolutely. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Hello, this is Nikolai, lead singer of Closure, and you're listening to Indie Rage Radio. Very good. I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And you guys, 